Good morning, congregation. You guys can stand up. Those of you at home, worship with us. Like the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. Like the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. Like the spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Like the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on. Come down. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room. you feel the room you're here and i know you are moving i know and i know you will feel me yeah fill us up more. fire and wind so fire and wind would you do it again open up the gates let heaven come in Make my heart pound when you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound when you feel the room. Like the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Like the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Come down, come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Your 
Spirit. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. Sing it again. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, yes. Come rest on us. Yeah, rest on us. Rest on us. Come on, Richard, play that sax. move you make my heart pound when you feel the room you're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down spirit when you move you make my heart pound when you feel the room you're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me the gates let heaven come in come rest on us come rest on us fire and wind would you do it again open up the gates let heaven come in come rest on us come rest on us come down come down spirit when you move you make my heart pound when you feel the room you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and
this next song I don't know about you guys if you had a hard week or whatever you were going through but right now we can just lay it all down all of our burdens all of our cares all of the stress of the world as we enter into worship I love this song it's about it may look like I'm surrounded surrounded by all kinds of crazy stuff stress chaos whatever it is but I'm surrounded by you. So let's make this our prayer. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. Let's sing it. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. Come on, church, sing it. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles through worship. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, it may look, it may look like I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by you. Sing it, church. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. Come on. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded. Sing it again. Come on, here we go. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how, this is how I fight my battles. 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 Oh, keep it going, keep it going. Sing. Come on, church. We're going to fight our battles through worship, through prayer. Play that 
week and it was so beautiful defender of my heart we're going to make this our prayer for those of you who need this today let's just sing it out
did was praise. And all I did was praise. All I did. And all I did was worship. And all I did was bow down. Yeah. And all I did was stay still. Hallelujah. Sing it. And hallelujah. You have saved me so much better. morning by show of hands there's a lot of you in here this morning so welcome how many of you feel that you need a defender right now to go before you look at the hands come up right and that's what this song is talking about about having a defender that's going to go before you and that already knows your steps right and I love what the song talks about it Katana sang this last Sunday because it's talking about all we do is stand and praise and worship him not just in the good times, but also in the bad, also, also in the seasons, the situations, and circumstances. If you believe that this morning, please give the Lord a round of applause. 
And I just want to read this scripture this morning in Psalms 100. It says, Shout for joy to the Lord, the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with your joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. And that is what we're doing here this morning in worship. So can we please give Katana and the worship team a round of applause. What a, what a phenomenal job, Katana. And before you guys are seated, high five someone next to you and tell them how amazing they look today that you did not come with. And while you are doing that, I'm gonna welcome our online family and community. My name is Pastor Joseph Mendoza. I am the lead of our Family Strong Ministry and we are excited that you chose to join us this morning. So if you're on our website, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, share because you care. I have a little secret. Tim Story's in the house this morning and he has a special, special message, you guys. But first of all, I need to give credit where credit's due. How many of you here were last Sunday and heard Pastor Page's message that was absolutely phenomenal? As we started this new series on when all hell breaks loose. How many of you guys know that hell's going to break loose in our life, right? It's going to happen. But the cool thing is Pastor Page gave us a roadmap last Sunday on how we can get through life's storms. And I said something pretty powerful last Sunday. I said, not every storm comes into your life to disrupt you, right? Or to devastate you. It comes into your life to make room and clear a path for you, right? To let God do what only God can do, not what we could do, but let God do what he could do. So if you're a first time guest today online, put in the chat section, hey, Joseph, I'm new. I promise you somebody will reach out to you right now. If you're new in the house this morning, welcome home. Thank you for coming to the congregation family. I see so many new faces this morning, Pastor Page, and it's amazing. And as I sit here and stare at Monty and Tiffany, thank you guys for coming all the way from Arizona to be here today with us this morning. That's powerful, guys. So thank you for being here. And uh, after service, you guys, don't run. Stick around. We would love to meet you. We have a tent outside. My amazing friend, Jennifer J. Lewis. Let's give it up for Jennifer. Jennifer would love to meet you. I would love to meet you. So don't run off. It's Fellowship Sunday. And uh, rumor has it, kids, that there might be ice cream outside. Maybe. So uh, I see some of the parents getting excited. So we have ice cream Sundays for the whole family after service. So don't run off. Uh, stick around. Meet somebody you didn't come with. And I have a couple quick announcements. Thought Leaders is this coming Saturday, Chris. Can you believe it? So, yes, let's clap for Thought Leaders. So if you have not purchased your Thought Leader tickets yet, today is the day to do so. It is this coming Saturday, 10 a.m. right here in this room, in this auditorium. And let me tell you guys, we have an amazing morning and afternoon planned for you guys, okay? Our Thought Leaders is our marketplace ministry, entrepreneurs, business owners, people who have teams, downlines, real estates that make impact in their respective industries, you guys. So I would encourage you, there should be a QR code, possibly. Look at all these uh, handsome guys and beautiful gal up here. Pastor Page, you're the only lady up there. But we will all be here this coming Saturday. And we have special guests that will be with us as well. So please be sure to scan the QR code. I'm not sure if Hannah's going to put that up. If not, come and see me. We can help you get your tickets after service today. And we did something amazing last Sunday. So I oversee our Family Strong Ministry with the help of my amazing friend, Chris. Can we give Chris Gunawardena a big round of applause? Chris is also our director for our Thought Leaders Ministry, and him and his wife and his family do so much for the congregation family. And we kicked off our Family Strong um, Sunday series that we're going to do once a month where we do a class. And last week we did a class, and we basically are doing family vision scripts, you guys. And last week we talked about freedom. And how many of you know that you really won't find peace in your life until you find freedom? 
right? So we're teaching families and moms and dads on how to find freedom in their life. And Brad, I'm staring at you because you told me how amazing it was last Sunday. And the cool thing is, is Miss Fredolin, our children's ministry director, and my amazing wife, Felicia, they are doing family vision scripts with the kids as well, you guys. And I heard that it was phenomenal last week that they're really teaching them, you guys, hear me on this, parents, on how to find their freedom and their identity. And they did this cool exercise where they had to draw themselves. And how many of you guys know that kids at such a young age don't want to draw themselves because they don't like the way they look? They struggle with their appearance. They struggle with their confidence. They struggle with what social media says. They struggle with what their peers say at school. But we're making a way for them to understand that God made them beautiful just the way that they are, even with their imperfections, you guys, even with that. So we're excited. We launched that last Sunday. So we're going to do it the last Sunday of August. So moms and dads, if you would like to come, it is not too late. It'll be class two. We're doing a three-part series on family vision scripts. So come see me. And last but not least, uh, Pastor Paige, if you want to make your way up here, we are going to be launching Vision Builders 24. Can somebody say Vision Builders? And Vision Builders, Pastor Page, is exactly for the congregation, for everybody online, where you can partner with us as we press in to the end of 2023, but more importantly, where God has us going as a church in 2024 and beyond. So, a little bit later to, uh, this morning, Pastor Tim is going to be talking about how you guys can partner. I will come up here and help him with that, you guys. But without further ado, can we give it up one more time for Pastor Paige? Thank you, Joseph. As she leads us in our tithe and in our offering this morning. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Paige. Ah, she does a great job. Can you show your appreciation for him? Wow. Thank you, Scott, right? Hey, hi, Scott. Uh, Katana, excellent job. And I really want to talk about Fabricio here. Okay, all the way from Italy, you guys. Come on. He, he is one of the best drummers in Southern California. Okay, and he's blessed us with his presence today. He's going to be here all month. All right, so don't miss praise and worship. Because if you got a drummer like this, I'm going to tell you, we're going to go for it, okay? I said, we're not going to contract this guy out without really blowing the house out. So show up and praise and worship, okay? Promise? All right, and the rest of the team, give it up again for the rest of the team. That's awesome. All right, thank you so much. No music on that. I'd like to just uh, really talk about the tithe and the offering, and it is such a privilege to give to God. And why does the congregation church give to God is because God has given to us. You see, there's a faithfulness in God. And when we remain faithful in him, we take on his very nature. And the faithfulness that he asks us to have, really, he says, listen, guys, he says in his Bible, he doesn't say, listen, guys, I say, listen, guys. But God says, if you obey my word, if you follow my word, I have promises. Someone say promises. promises. I've got promises for you that I'm working in your behalf behind the scenes to give you abundance of what you can't even imagine. But it's going to take your faithfulness to continue when you're criticized, when you don't see the results, when you're tired, when you actually feel like you want to give up, you cannot give up because God is already moving things on your behalf. And if you give up, you're going to miss the blessing. Can someone give the Lord a shout and a praise? That's good teaching. So Luke 6, 37 says, do not judge so you'll be judged. Do not condemn. So you won't condemn. We don't do that here. But give. Someone say give. Give. Give and it shall be given to you. And then this is the promise. A measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your household. 
So first of all, we'd like to say as a pastoral staff, first of all, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for those that give the tithe and the offering in this storehouse, because everything you see here, you are part of the giving family. And without the giving family, we cannot be online, we cannot have this building, we cannot have a staff. You make it possible for all of us to have a ministry in God's will in this community. Give yourself a big, big clap. Thank you. Thank you. So I want you to start to prepare right now. Talk to your husband or your wife or your spouse. And I want you to say, what are we going to give today? How should we give? You see a lot of people in this church right here. And it's a blessing when people actually come to church. Uh, I was just on a uh, cable newcast, newscast, and the question that I answered, you know, as a pastor for the nation was, why is it that people have not have stopped coming to church? Well, when I look at out here, I see a lot of you in church. So that's, yeah, come on. That's awesome. Because you have to be able to experience not only uh, the fellowship, but you need to experience the atmosphere and the presence of God. Now, I know it can come through online as well, because we get a lot of people telling us that, man, the presence of God was so strong online. This message was great. The music was great. But there's nothing like being in the atmosphere of God, because when God gives out his promises, he changes your mind in his presence. He changes your heart, and you become a person that will give. So it says that he will give so seed to the sower, and so today God is giving you seed if you sow, not if you don't sow. He says, I will give seed to the sower. I close with this. So giving comes from a giving mentality. My brother wrote a fantastic book. I'm sure so, most of you have that. Miracle mentality. There is a giving mentality that we must have. A giving mentality is those that are spiritually led, because you are a child of God, to be able to be generous like your father, your heavenly father, and to give into God's work. That's what keeps everything going. We need the work of God on the earth. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Especially now. Listen, church, we are in a very important season of our life. You matter. Your giving matters because your giving will change people's lives and change the atmosphere in people's homes and bring uh, people out of darkness into his light. I want you to catch that, but you're not going to catch that by your mind and by your logic. You need to catch it by your heart and by your spirit. So when you are giving this morning, you are giving for a cause that God says that he wants to move in this community. He has asked us to come to sacrifice. We've been in ministry 40 years. He's come to, he, he's asked us to come to plant ourselves here. And he says, I will bring them. I will open the doors and I will provide. Amen. So God is providing through you. Someone say me. He's providing this ministry through me. And that's how it works. So have a giving mentality this morning because when you give, God gives back. That is a principle and a promise. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for all those who give. We ask that you would bless the seed. You said that you would give seed to the sower. We ask that you would press down, shaken together, runneth over, and multiply the finances in those that give. Release the finances to us today. Meet every need of this church in staff, in rent, in all the things that we're doing online. Change and turn the hearts of the people so that they will give this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we make it very easy for you to give. We have beautiful ushers on the side here. Please raise your hand now if you would like an envelope and you can give me some music. 
And so raise your hand, raise your hand real high if you need an envelope. And those of you I know give online, okay? There's a couple people that need that, to give online. And you can text to give, that's all the information right there. We make it very easy for you. Thank you for those online. I mean, probably 50% of our giving comes from our online members. So again, we say thank you to you. Continue to give. As Tim's story has challenged all of us, that those of you that are watching for the very first time, he's saying give $30, you know, and just be, just begin to sow, just begin to sow that seed into this ministry, and we will bless you. Continue to watch us. I promise you, your lives will change. Your lives will be better because we are called by God to help you, to lift you up, and to bring the best of Jesus to you. So let's do that right now as they are doing this last bridge. I want to, so let's hold off a little bit before we collect. And then right after that, Tim Story is going to come and give the message this morning. in every way wonderful sing it with us beautiful glorious matchless in every way wonderful beautiful glorious matchless in every way wonderful beautiful in every way wonderful beautiful glorious matchless in every way wonderful beautiful glorious matchless in every way wonderful beautiful Matchless in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Matchless in every way, wonderful. Yes, matchless in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Matchless in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Matchless in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious. I want you to do that real slow. Sing that real slow. Beautiful, glorious. Matchless. Matchless in every way, wonderful. Just try it. Lift your hands. Beautiful, glorious. Matchless in every way, wonderful. Beautiful, glorious. Matchless in every way, wonderful. Just a piano and katana for one minute. Beautiful. Glorious, matchless in every way, wonderful. Just say these words, say, thank you, God, for being present in my life. Matchless in every way, wonderful. Say, I give you all my challenges. keep your eyes closed father we thank you that we give you all the challenges we face and we have gratitude today for how far you brought us we pray for the peace of this world and we thank you Lord that you are protecting us in the midst of all things and that this month would be a month of going forward of supernatural miracles supernatural breakthroughs for all those that are watching today God bring miracles to their life that they did not expect 
for you are a God of miracles and everybody said amen can we one more time give the worship band and team a big clap thank you guys so much and then you guys may be seated I had the privilege of watching Pastor Page's uh, message from Miami. I was in Miami last week for about eight days working. And um, as I was watching, I just literally said, holy schmoly. Like, she is good. What a great job she did. Could you give Pastor Page a big clap? And um, Pastor Stefan's teaching on what to do with all hell breaks loose was fantastic as well. Him and Callie are watching. Can you clap for them all the way in Sweden? And um, today I'm going to continue on this series about what to do when all hell breaks loose. But I want you to just listen to me. This is a subject that I know a lot about. So I beg you to tune in. I'll start with a a scripture from the New Living Translation, James chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. If you have that, put that up. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life. I want you real loud to say this. Say, say I live an honorable life. Okay, what I want you to know is when it says an honorable life, it means to step up to the calling that God called you to step up to. I want you to say this. Say, I will step up to the calling that God called me to step up to. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, let me just quote it, says, to walk worthy of the calling you've received. So every person that's here today and those watching online, you have a calling. The Greek word calling is the word eklego, which means you have a specific calling. Like, I don't want to be Brene Brown. She's fantastic. I don't want to be Tony Robbins. I don't want to be anybody else but myself, because otherwise that'd be saying to God, you made a mistake. You should have made me more like them. But every one of you is called to a specific calling. Your calling is specific, say specific, but it's also unique. So that's why I say you've been born an original, don't die a copy. But if you decide to be honorable and live an honorable life, I want you to know it's not going to be easy because a lot of people have decided to live a, a dishonorable life, a life that's not true, a life that's not real, a, a life that is not in, in alignment to God's assignment. Somebody say, that's good. By living an honorable life, doing good works, with humility, ooh, that's a new one for today's age. With humility that comes from wisdom. Now, two ways you can learn humility. One is by following God's direction, and it's like in a, in a boat, you, you, you learn from the rudder. God just leads you in wisdom, and you just walk in humility because you know that's best to walk in humility. The other way to learn humility is to learn from the rocks, meaning you just keep crashing into the rocks. <laughs> Most people learn from the rocks rather than from the rudder. I'd rather learn from the rudder. Verse 14. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. This is very good for today's world because it says if you have selfish ambition, there's nothing wrong with having ambition. Ambition means you are 
going after what God has placed in your heart. My friend, Coach Michael Burt calls it pray drive. When God puts a God idea in your life and you go after it with pray drive, like for Manny, for what's next for you, I want you to go after it with, with, with pray drive. For Mwango, I want you to go after what you're doing with, with, with pray drive. Nehemiah, I want you to go after it with pray drive. For Chris, I like seeing what you're doing with thought leaders and all those other things I see that you're doing. I want you to go at it with pray drive. With John Velasquez, I want you to go after it with pray drive. Go after it with pray drive because that's God's ambition. But the Bible says when you have selfish ambition, you're going to be off. The word ambition means this, a desire for achievement, but in this context, it means, watch this, that you are going after it because you have the desire, you have the desire to be known and to be seen. That's where most people are. They want something so that they can be known and seen and look at me and look what I've accomplished. And really what that does is it takes you away from God's alignment. It says, verse 15, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and even demonic. Ooh, we got to go there. What to do when all hell breaks loose? All hell doesn't just break loose in the fact that there is a war between countries. That's part of it. All hell doesn't break loose just because when you drive through Los Angeles and you see so many people that are homeless and you have to see good people talking to them themselves because they're schizophrenic without medicine. Somebody needs to pay attention. It's heartbreaking. Hell will many times break loose, but it doesn't just break loose on the outside. Hell will break out. It breaks out of people. It's one thing to get hell from the outside. It's another thing to get hell coming out of one of your relatives, out of your husband, out of your wife, out of your sister-in-law, out of your brother-in-law, I'm not done, out of your father, out of your mother, out of church people. See, Lucifer is smart. He doesn't want just hell to attack you from the outside. He wants to put something inside of somebody that they will constantly attack you from the inside. That you even go to Thanksgiving and you think like, man, I feel like I was under attack. Or I just went to a parent-teacher conference and I, I think that one of the mothers is hating on me. Somebody say, this is good. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and even demonic. It says this in the Bible, that some things are even demonic. They're coming from a darker force. Can I tell you something? The things that people have lied about with you are sometimes not in the realm of the normal. They said such lies about you that they would almost chip the paint off the wall. They could break a person down and, and start such things because they're demonically inspired. I want you to know something. Just as God's words are anointed to lift people up, the devil's words are anointed to tear people down. Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there will be disorder and every evil kind of work. Oh, this is so good. That's why you could go to a family reunion and it says the Smith family. 
says it on the t-shirt, unity, but you got disunity everywhere. Because that cousin doesn't like that cousin. Because that brother doesn't like that brother. Is this good teaching so far? And that person doesn't like that person. You could go to the family reunion and you're feeling good on purpose. And all of a sudden, you just feel like you have to protect yourself and guard yourself. Why? Because it says, wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder. Disorder. Sometimes you find it in the family, like even, like I said, on holidays. It could be birthday parties, quinceañeras, whatever things you guys have to go to. And you feel all this disorder that's taking place. Verse 17, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. How many of you want to be pure in your heart and in your motives? Just wave your hand. Can you clap real loud if you want to be pure in your motives? Come on, keep clapping like you want to be pure in your motives. For the wisdom that comes from God is pure. It also is full of peace. Isn't it nice to be around people that they just want you to succeed? that a lot, of, a lot of people that go on dates tell me that the other person that they went on the date with just can't stop talking about themselves. Who's ever had that in a date a long time ago? Because some of you are married, so don't, don't show it now. Just pretend like, uh, I, honey, it was 27 years ago. Where you go on a date and it's just about them how fancy they are, okay? That was some of my Zumba moves. <laughs> but the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure. It is also full of peace. It is loving. It is gentle at all times. <sighs> so when somebody is hating you at a, at a restaurant just because you showed up and they're the server sometimes it's demonic it's coming from a bad place it says but god's ways are full of mercy and good deeds they show no favoritism i said they show no favoritism anybody around you uh anybody around me will tell you that i show no favoritism to the bus boy, I'm talking to him. I was at the Hotel Laguna the other day, and the guy at the, at the parking thing says, why are you always nice to me? I said, because you look like a great human being. Everywhere I go, I treat everybody at a high level because they are a creation of God. <laughs> Clap your hands like we should treat everybody like they're God's Keep clapping like you got big energy today. So when you walk in God's spirit, you show no favoritism and you're always sincere. But we're talking about this thing that when all hell breaks loose, many times it happens. I write in my notes because of this thing called jealousy. Jealousy is a resentment against a rival or a person enjoying success that you think has an advantage. Has anybody ever faced somebody coming at you with a spirit of jealousy? You should lift your hands. And if you have never, then you don't do much in life. Let's try that again. How many of you have ever had people jealous towards you? You should probably lift your hands or you don't do much in life. Because if... If you step out and even do something half decent, okay, if you go from a Ford Pinto to a Gremlin, it's going to get somebody bothered. If your kids decide to go to private school, it's going to get somebody bothered. If you decide to get bangs, it could get somebody bothered. Come on, somebody. If you decide to go from a from, from a from a Timex to a fake Rolex. Come on, somebody. It's going to get somebody bothered. You, it doesn't even have to be a real Rolex. You could go to a Flolex. If you get your teeth straightened, it's going to get somebody bothered. 
If you lose 12 pounds, it's going to get somebody bothered. Because jealousy is a powerful force that I'm going to talk about today and teach you how to handle when all hell breaks loose out of somebody. Jealousy is suspicion. It is something that somebody feels on the inside this person has something that should have been mine. Ooh, it's so good. Jealousy cannot help itself, according to my notes. It, it, is, it is geared to attack. Watch this. Many times, because of what jealousy feels, it cannot lie dormant. It looks for weaknesses within another individual, individual to go after those weaknesses. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you thought she's so great. Trust me, I know her past. It's an illustration. You see this like in the tabloids, like the National Enquirer and the Star. It'll say, Oprah's ex-boyfriend speaks out. It's like a guy from when she was 14. Are you with me? Steve Harvey's first wife speaks out. It's stuff from your past that somebody is saying, I know in your present in 2023, in August, you are thriving, that you're the head and not the tail, that you're above and not beneath, that you're going forward, and that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But if you don't mind, because of my jealousy, I would like to take you back to your past. Hey. Somebody say, good teaching. Jealousy usually has personal attacks, gossip, and rumors. This is what breaks up a lot of mega churches. The average mega church has five, seven, eight splits in the church. The associate pastor gets jealous of the senior pastor and says, I can do it, and if he doesn't think he could do it, the wife's in his ear. You could do better than him. You should pay attention. People get bothered with the senior pastor, and then they decide, we're going to split. We have not seen that much in here, but so I'm talking about other places. Companies split. Basketball teams split. Listen to me. Rock bands split. Families split. Because all of a sudden, there's these personal attacks, this gossip, these rumors. So I want to just tell you something, because i got to prepare you for where you're headed. As I often say, some of your lives are going to get so good within a year, it's going to be weird. Clap your hands. Come on, clap real loud like that's actually going to happen. And guess what? Not everybody's going to send you a card. Not everyone's going to say, hey, Manny and Michelle, so glad you found each other. So awesome. Love it. <laughs> so I'm going to say, really? Look at them. Who do they think they are? <laughs> Who's this Pastor Paige? Why she always has all this style? Who's Katana singing with swag? Who's Tim Story wearing tennis shoes with the red bottom? <laughs> Somebody say, this is good. All right, the jealous person is on a war path. And sometimes they don't even know it. But it takes the right person for them to strike. A jealous person is not going to go after somebody that's just weak. If you're weak, feeble, bleeding, hurting, going down already, why does a jealous person need to attack you? They usually go after somebody that is thriving, that is in stride. 
I prophesy to you that your August is going to be powerful. Your September is going to be powerful. Your October is going to be powerful. Your November is going to be powerful. Keep on clapping. Your December is going to be amazing. Keep clapping. Your January is going to be powerful. Come on, your February is going to be powerful. Your March is going to be powerful. You're going to go from glory to 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 glory. And because of that, all hell is going to break loose. When I was in Miami, you got to check the weather because it rains a lot. So it's like 111 million degrees already there. And humidity is so high. But then you got to check, you know, your iPhone. And it says, chance of rain between 12, 12 p.m., like noon, to 121. I'm like, my God, they got it down to the ones. It's a true story. Chance of rain. Between 12 and 121, if you decide to walk worthy of your calling, chance of hell breaking out, check your iPhone, will be constant. It will be constant. For me, it's constant. I think we're only down to eight stalkers. I have about eight stalkers, women who say, marry me or I will kill you. How many of you know that's not what's getting my attention? <laughs> that's why at these big conferences I have to have bodyguards because people want to kill me because I don't want to marry them. I never met them, but God allegedly spoke to them that they're supposed to marry me or they're going to kill me. I would rather not be killed, K-I-L-T. So what do I see that is? It's demonic. Somebody left a door open in their life and now they got fantasies and you, you either want me or you're going to kill me. It doesn't seem like agape love. We get hundreds of requests for me to eat lunch with people every month. I don't do it. Because I don't know where you're coming from. I'm talking about even from men. Hey, I'm in town. I'm an influencer. Uh, I see myself being like you. Uh, love to buy you lunch. Ever heard of Uber Eats? I can call my own lunch in. You say... That sounds like that's uh, selfish. It sounds like uh, you should be open to everybody. Jesus was not open to everybody. Huh. What do you mean by that? Jesus talked to the 12 disciples and told them most of the things. He talked to the three, Peter, James, and John. He told them more of the things. Only to his father, he told everything. You think I'm going to tell somebody who has never paid my price about what I'm really feeling? Would somebody clap your hands like you catch what I'm saying? So Jesus talked to the Father, told them everything. To the 12, he told them some things. To the 70, he spoke in parables. To the 500, he spoke in parables. I need to teach some of you to stop telling people what you're really feeling. Because according to Jack Nicholson, Nicholson they can't handle the truth. Remember from the movie? You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. Tim Story, what's your latest project? They go, well, step by step. Well, what does that mean? What are you doing? Ah, a couple little things. But then I'll get with my sister and I'll go, hey. 
just signed that deal. What, what, what? Gonna buy you some new shoes. Hey, hey, hey. Who buys you the best presents? She had to go take some of her shoes back recently, and then she had to find out the price. She was like, holla. Why do I do that for my mother? Give my mother a big clap back there. My mother's gonna be 92. Come on, people. March the 1st. My mom is cute. My mom is sassy. My mom is feisty. But you, 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 if you ever look at her, her, her jewelry collection, if she wore it all at once, watch, she would tilt. Because it would be so heavy. I do this out of the goodness of my heart. Because it's rare, Will, who I trust, that you can find people that can handle what you're holding. Oh, I'm on today. If you ain't holding nothing, they can handle you all day long. If you're living life and you just look at me, I'm acting, you're tripping over your own shoelaces, they can handle you. But some people cannot handle what you're holding. There's people here that you're going to have so much money within five years, you're going to be a blessing to your family three generations down. I think you should clap your hands. And those watching on air, come on, come on. You're going to be such a blessing to your family three generations down. Well, how am I going to do it, Tim Story? It all it takes is one best-selling book, two best-selling books. All it takes is you writing a screenplay. All it takes is you coming up with an idea. All it takes is you coming up with an invention. Some of you are one invention away from setting up your children's children's children. Can somebody please believe like God is able to do this? See, I get it. So when you decide to step up and step out into your high calling, all hell's going to break loose. How often will this happen? Because now you're beginning to scare me <laughs> on a daily basis. On a daily basis. You watch me, how I have to deal with people, huh? I'm like, oh, good to see you. Looks like you want to kill me. Good to see you. That's awesome. You look like a hater. Great to see you, though. It's awesome. Because you got to maintain your peace. you got to maintain your love walk. Because people are trying to take you out of your love walk. Man. I know the guy. Who, who saw the movie, the Flaming Hot Cheetos movie? That's my friend. Richard, he says, man, Tim, all oh, hell has come against me since we started on that movie and I got Avon Longoria to be part of it and my friend Devon Franklin uh, produced it. He says, like, all oh, hell has come at me. He says, because some of our people, some of our people can't handle success. Do you know that Joseph, which is following God's plan, and all hell broke loose, the enemy got into his own brothers, and his brothers said, we don't know why, but we got to put this guy in a pit. We don't know why. Let's throw him in a pit, P-I-T. Let's throw him in a ditch. Let's, let's, let's say he was devoured by somebody else. Let's lie. Let's throw him in a pit. How many people have tried to throw you in a pit? Try to throw you in a pit. Somebody say, this is so good. There are different types of hearts in the Bible. There is the understanding heart, Proverbs 8, 5. Go through this slow. There's the merry heart, Proverbs eleven twenty. 20. Uh, how many of you want to live with a merry heart? Look at me. Just come on. Wait, wait, come on, smile, even if, if you have three teeth. Just come on. Just. There's the understanding heart. There's the merry heart. There's the wise heart, Proverbs 16, 21. There's the pure heart, Proverbs 24, 4. I guarantee you, if somebody has a pure heart, they love your success. 
I went to one of my friend's house recently. He has a $44 million home. I said, $44 million. I didn't go like this and go, who looks too big? <laughs> looks like it could be haunted. <laughs> and then this brother's got a trap door in his house. I'll tell you later who it is, because I want to connect you with him. He has a trap door. He literally went like this. He goes, you want to see some of my art? He went like this, do, 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 do. In like a movie. It... Are you with me? I was excited when we were kids and we got a, a door for our dog to go out. <laughs> Look at it. He could go out. <laughs> he could use the bathroom, run around, and come back in. This guy had a code. <laughs> Renee, he had, a, he had a code. He went like this. Do, 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 do. And it went. <laughs> I was like, holla. <laughs> he said, this is this. He named the type of painting. This is this. This is something rare. I won't, I can't say what it was because then I, I might give the person away. Then this, he had art that was like, what? Not one time did I get jealous. I just thought, my God. He goes, Tim, I, I was like you. I came from regular. I came from regular and I got ideas. And then I got another idea. 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 Can somebody please clap? Come on, clap your hands real strong. Look at this great crowd today. Come on, people. So when you have a pure heart, you don't want to break hell out on somebody. You want to break heaven on somebody. Give me some people in my life that want to put some heaven on me. One person said recently, it looks like your hair is thinning. Your hair looks like it's getting more thin. I go, it is. I'm 127. <laughs> That's what happens when you're 127. Your hair thins. Another person said, you're getting, you look like you're getting too skinny. I go, it's, it's on purpose. It looks like you got Botox. I did. <laughs> but the question is, why are you so concerned? What's, what's in your brain? What's in your brain? Come on, somebody. That's not okay with me thriving. What, what's, what's in your brain that you're not okay with the other person rising to the new dimensions that God has called them to rise in? Somebody clap your hands and shout. You're going to rise. So you have the understanding heart, the merry heart, the wise heart, the broken heart, the pure heart, but you have the jealous heart. And I'll break that down in the last three minutes. The jealous heart comes from the spirit of Lucifer himself. Isaiah 14, 12 says, How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn? You have been cast down to earth. You said in your heart, there were three top angels in heaven. Somebody say Michael. Michael. Say it strong. Say Michael. Michael. Say Gabriel. Gabriel. Lucifer. Lucifer. People, this is my life. I'm working on a play on this. I worked on raising $15 million to do a play on this subject. I got one man already that said, I'll give you the whole money, $15 million. I got the, probably the greatest rap star in the history of rap who said, I will do the music for it. So I don't play. I get things done. So watch. So I know this subject. I've studied this subject for 20 years. There's three top angels in heaven. Michael, watch, is the... Warring angel. Michael is warring. But there was no war to war at first. Because heaven was in sync. Wow. 
Gabriel was the messenger. No message to give because heaven was in sync. The one who had activated his gift was Lucifer. He was the anointed cherub. He was the song leader of heaven. But in his heart, he said, it's not good enough. And he said, I will be greater than God. Oh, my goodness. That's what happens when your family members are not okay with their position. They want to attack you. I'm going to see if you can come up on the piano, Scott. They want to attack you. How many of you ever had that once in your life? You should lift your hand. Where a family member attacked you. You should probably lift your hands again or you don't get out much. Who's ever had people attack you, even at the job? Just lift your hands. So it says this. And you just play almost more on the piano sound. And I appreciate him. Me and him have been working together for probably 30 years. Give him a big clap. He's awesome. Lucifer said this. He says, I will ascend above the clouds and I will make myself greater than God himself. What? Oh my gosh. Why can't you just be, why can't you just be proud of us? Why do you want to try to outdo us? Why can't you just re release heaven to me and say, good going, John. So proud of you. Look how well you've done. Wave at me, John. Why can't you just release heaven? Good going, Chris. My goodness, you got a gift. Look at this gift that you have. You got such a gift. This gift is, is, is really making room for you. I, I, I'm glad that you helped start thought leaders. Good going, Paige. You're still beautiful at the ripe age of 32. You're 32 and you're still glowing. Hey. Good going, Joseph Mendoza. You're a great father. I call Joseph sometimes and I hear his kids in the background. He goes, sorry, I, the kids are talking. I said, let them talk. I want to hear kids talking. Because I like the fact that he's a good dad. I like him. Good going, Nehemiah. You're this age. Wave at me. You're young. You're strong. You're in even better shape than me. You're cuter than me. You got more hair than me. Good going, Nehemiah. What could I do for you? Kelly, how's your show going? Kelly, how's it working? When, when, it, when it works, I'm going to be excited for you. Mwango, how's it going? When it all works, I'm going to be excited for you. Manny, I'm glad you're having all this success in life. I'm excited for you. Because I have my portion. My portion doesn't even need to be bigger than your portion. Shh. I have my portion. It doesn't even have to be bigger than your portion. The man with the $44 million home walked me out of his house. And he said, I'm not a hugger. I don't hug. I don't hug people. But can I hug you? I said, yeah. He hugged me and he said, thank you for acting like you're on my side. I said, I am on your side. His friend later called me, said he was blown away by you. He couldn't believe you didn't go at it like, oh, you did that, I did this, you did this, I did this. I just said, tell me your story. If you learned something today, clap your hands like God is awesome. Come on, clap, I'm done speaking. Keep on clapping. Glad you I clap real loud. Bring the whole worship team out here. I keep on clapping. I keep on clapping. Come on. I keep on clapping.
Lift your hands. Say, I am so protected by God. Say, my calling is so big. Close your eyes. I want you to see your so big calling. I want you to see your so big calling. People are being healed right now. I want you to see yourself healed. People are being changed right now. See yourself changed. People are being restored right now. Say, Lord, if I have any jealousy in my heart, forgive me. See, I'm for everyone. you fall fall on me and let the power let the power of the holy ghost fall on me anointing fall on me sing it together anointing fall on me Let the power Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. One more time. Let the anointing fall on me. Anointing. Won't you fall on me? Fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power. Okay, you got your hand and you put it on your heart. Just a piano sound and the guitar. Say, dear God, guard my heart. When all hell comes against me through people, my heart is guarded. Say, dear God, heal my heart. Now close your eyes because your heart is being healed. Some of you have been wounded even by past relationships. The enemy used people against you. next one minute something supernatural is coming your way close your eyes say I receive my miracle just close your eyes and just breathe that in whether it's a miracle of healing or finances whatever the miracle is as you watch online whatever the miracle is is that you need God is sending miracles uncommon unnatural Unreal.
Okay, I want you to look at me. Some of you, you're walking with a limp, a spiritual limp, because people wounded you. Could be as early as your childhood, where Lucifer himself sent people to wound you. Because the Bible says in the book of Psalms that the enemy comes after the innocent. That's why they used to call me the N-word as a kid since I was little, to wound me. You don't look like your sister, you little, since I was a kid, that's to wound me. That's why the, the girl when I was in fourth grade said to the teacher, I can't sit next to him because my mother won't let me sit next to a, an N-word. And she said the N-word. People hear me? I could have got to the point where I'm like, oh, is this how we do life? Either I was going to see that or I was going to get God's purity in my heart. Come on, somebody. The purity that says, I'm not going to punish people for what they don't know. I'm going to walk like the king that I am. Or you're going to walk like the queen that you are. Will somebody please clap your hands? Come on, people. Come on, keep clapping. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Did I help anybody today? Just wave at me if I helped anybody today. What to do when all hell breaks loose? Some of your hell is not coming just from the outside. It's coming from just people in your family. They can't help themselves. They want to go after your vitals. We're raising money for this church. We're a young church. We had to close down for two years during the pandemic. And we met only online. If we were Saddleback Community with 30,000 members or Mariner's Church with 25,000 members, they got hit too, but they had so much money and surplus that they could just bounce back. When you have a young church like this, you gotta rally back. Who's ever been in a place in your life where financially you had to have a comeback? Just lift your hands, okay? So you understand. The Bible says this, I was studying this a lot yesterday. One person gives freely, but yet he gains even more. You know what I learned? When I started giving at 15 years of age, money would come from places I didn't expect. In my life now, you know, I gave so many years to this church, never taking a salary, missing Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, where I would average a lot of money to go speak on Sundays. Just trust me on that. I was losing so much money every month. Pastor Page was losing so much money every month. Pastor Stefan, Joseph, all of us that jumped in, Cali, just to build a church. But Pastor Page, hasn't God found ways to more than meet your needs? Yeah? Because when you give, watch, it comes back. Say this, say it's coming back. So I want you to look at me in the eyes. Let's build a church right here. Let's talk to people that are Buddhist, Muslim that follow me, that come from the Sikh religion that follow me. Listen to me. That never go to church anymore. Agnostic, atheists that follow me. But now they're getting becoming Christians because they're watching the congregation online. Can you please clap your hands? How awesome is this? We're helping so many people. So Joseph, tell us how we can give today and what we're doing. And stay standing. This is, this is, this is worth standing for. So as I mentioned earlier, we are kickstarting our Vision Builders 24 campaign. And as Pastor Tim said, that's about giving. And when you give, it's not about yourself. When you give, you're sowing into others. So even as we train our kids up at such a young age to give, they're not giving for themselves. They're giving for the future kids who will come into the congregation family, right? So our Vision Builders Fund, we're already in the second half of 2023, but we're pressing into 2024 
and beyond. And we need your help and we need your partnership. And you could do so several ways today. So we're gonna give you an amazing opportunity. My great friend, Nehemiah, my amazing brother, Chris, we have these vision builder cards that they're gonna pass out to everybody. They're gonna pass them out to everybody in the rows. And what these cards, I'm gonna explain it to you. What these cards are is for you guys to step up and to step out and to pledge what God has put on your heart to sow into the congregation family as we continue to reach more families. Now there's two, two things on this card that I really wanna point out, Tim is there something called the pledge, which is a total dollar amount. So there are some of you out there who are gonna say, hey, Pastor Joseph, I'm gonna pledge $10,000. I'm gonna pledge $5,000. I'm gonna pledge $1,000. So that is your pledge. That is your total amount. Total amount. Then there is something on this call, card called a first fruit. A first fruit. And let me explain that. A first fruit is something that you will give immediately today. So out of the 10, the five, the thousand, the 500 that you give, you are saying, congregation, family, this is my first fruit today. And there is a line on this card where it says, what is your commitment? Then it also says, what is your first fruits? So first fruits is something that you are going to partner with and give today and then what will happen is the rest of your pledge will be spaced out over a six month period you guys and we are believing that we will raise enough money and i believe is there a graphic oh there's a qr code behind me even better so there you go first fruits and a pledge that is probably an easier way if you take out your phone you can scan that it'll walk you directly through everything i just said on this card but if there are some of you who want to fill the card out and put your information on here, we will collect this. Easier to scan the QR code. And as we give you guys, let's just remember that we're sowing into other people's lives. We're sowing into somebody else's comeback. We're sowing into somebody's son, brother, mom, dad, and sponsoring their restoration. So I'm excited. I've stepped up, my wife and I, and we have done our pledge. I have given our first fruits already. Why? Because we believe in what we're doing here at the congregation family. We believe in what Tim, what Pastor Paige, what Pastor Stefan and Kelly in Sweden are doing. So we want you guys to partner with us today as we press in, as we continue to change Lives. So you guys can fill out this QR code or scan the QR code, fill out this card. If anybody needs a pen, please raise your hand. Nehemiah and Chris will get you a pen. Take the time. I see a lot of you on your cell phones right now. If there's anybody online right now who would like to partner with our Vision Builders 24, there will be a link right there for you guys to click on where you guys can sow today your first fruits and also enter your pledges. And we can't do this without the online family and community, Tim. So we thank you guys for partnering with us. Thank you guys. Pastor Paige, anything you want to add? Yes. Yeah, so well, our goal is to add, Joseph, uh, uh, to raise 125000 And we are at 75000 right now. So we've had 75000 yeah, pledges. Can we clap for that? And we've had people bring their first fruits, but there are some people that are praying about their, their offering uh, to us. But uh, so like Joseph said, you make a pledge by faith, okay? And you have six months to pay the pledge off. But like you said, you can have a first fruit today. And w trust me, that money is already gonna be uh, put into the ministry because we do need that even now. We've got six months left at the end of the year. So the deadline for the pledge is January 31st, 2024. So you have them to January 30, 2024. So, uh, and what a lot of people do, Joseph, is they'll just do it on a monthly basis uh, or they do it all up front. 
But so thank you so much for your pledge. And thank you so much for those that already have pledged to this. And this, this money is going to go right into this ministry. It doesn't go anywhere else. It goes right into this ministry. So if you guys need a card or a pen, raise your hand. Scan the QR code. If you have any questions, you can see me immediately after service. I can answer any questions that you guys may have. See what God speaks to you, what he puts on your heart to give. And uh, as we wrap up and close, I just want to thank Tim for a powerful message. Can we give great Tim a big round of applause? And Tim, as I was, as I was listening to you on this message pertaining to jealousy as I was sitting in the back thinking jealous people want something that we possess and they lack and if there's some person that I know that I see that that happens with quite often Tim that is with you because of the power that he walks in and the authority that God has given him and the calling on his life but the price he paid to be where he's at today. So thank you for the message today, Tim. And remember, let's partner with people, as Tim said this morning, who are gonna impart heaven into our lives and not take from us and not steal from us, right? Let's partner with people who are gonna impart heaven into our lives, you guys. Pastor Paige, anything you wanna say as we close? Well, this just, you know, we have, our gift as a woman a man of god to come up here and to give a message tim's gift just really hit to the heart today like it's so practical and it's something that he has given us that we can take and start even today that god heals our heart that we protect our heart and that we would know that there are people who really some of i mean they love us but sometimes they can't handle where God is taking us. Yeah. They can't handle the success of it. So he's taught us today to protect our hearts, to protect our hearts. So awesome job. That was an awesome message. Thank you, Tim. That was awesome. So what we're going to do, give him a big clap. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's pray over these pledges right now, and then we're going to collect them. Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you again for your provision. You are our resource. You move upon the body of Christ in order to bring forth the blessings and the heavenly realms so that people can understand you, know you, and they can be saved, delivered, and healed through the power of your name and through the work of this ministry. So we thank you for the increase. We thank you for all the seeds that have been sown, and we receive it, and we put this money into your glory, into your work. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Okay, they're going to pass. They're passing the containers. Uh, everybody look up here. Raise your right hand. Say, this is my month. Say, I've been waiting for you. Say, thank you, God, for protecting me, healing me. Say, dear Jesus, come into my life in a new and special way. So, service is dismissed, and then we're going to do a worship song. If you just want to come up, if you need prayer for anything, just come, and I'll be up here, and other will be praying. But we'll see you next Sunday, okay? Let's just keep on flowing. I'm proud of you guys.